when you look at the Christmas story and you see in the scriptures, especially when we read Luke 2 on candlelight service, you, you see how much the eyesight. I mentioned Simeon, I mentioned Anna. They were promised no death to you see the Christ child, right? The shepherds go into Bethlehem and see what? See the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes? Lying in a manger. You all know, come on. This is the Christmas story, man. <clears throat> Even Linus on Snoopy gets it. Angels appeared suddenly, and they saw the angelic host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. The wise men said, We have seen his star in the sky. You see how many words? Are you for that to see? And when you think about how many see Christmas on the calendar, but they don't see the reason or the message of Christmas, do they? You can light a candle in front of them and they say, I see the light. But do they really? They're still in darkness. How can they see light if they're in darkness? So it's a false light, an artificial light. You look at the tree, artificial lights, right? The idea of this is, is, what do you want to see today, Christmas, end of this year, and into the new year? We talk, I talked a moment about that a little bit. But I come across this in my study the other day, and I've used this where, again, how, how great for Elisha to be sitting up on a mountaintop. Here comes all this army against him. One guy, the prophet, his servant, Against this entire host, and God says, I, I want to give them to you. One, two guys against an army, and God gives them this. But the servant didn't have the faith. He didn't have the eyes to see. So the prayer that, pray attention as I read this, what prayer is Elisha praying that you and I are going to need to pray this Christmas, specifically on behalf of our loved ones, nation, community? Okay, so let's start reading in Second Kings chapter six. The armies come against Elisha, um, verse thirteen, and the king said, "Go spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him." And it was told him, saying, "Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore, send he hither horses, chariots, a great host." And they came by night, and they can pass the city about. When the servant of the man of God was risen early, and gone forth, behold, a host, and passed the city both with horses and chariots. And a servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? He saw this host, and he was scared to death. Verse 16, And he answered, Fear not. And there again, how many times have we seen that? Fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Elisha prayed, and he said, Lord, I pray you, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of this young man, and he saw. Behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord, and he said, Smite this people, I pray you, with blindness. And so he smote them with blindness, according to the word of the prophet Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way. And neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. And he led them to Samaria. So it came to pass that when they were coming to Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. Let us pray. Holy Father, we ask of you now again, we would not be counted as the blind. We would not be as Paul, the missionary, that had the scales to be removed from his eyes. We would not be deems that are faithless, without faith, that cannot see. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The multitudes of angelic hosts that stand round about, ready, ready in a given moment to come at our beckoning and call for our defense, for our help, and for our encouragement. Even this day, 
May we have beyond carnal physical eyes, Father, to see. See the spiritual world. See your angelic face, Lord. That as the others beheld you, Lord, that again they knew. They knew that you was different. The Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ has come. Father, we would see great things today as well. Lord, we pray specifically for those that are blind. They stumble around in this world of darkness. They do not know the way. Lord, may they come seeking you. May they see you, gazing upon your face and behold the one who died for them. Give us that command in Hebrews 12, looking unto Jesus. May we look and see today, Father, and never be the same from here on now. I pray, Father, these prayers to be made, these prayers to be answered, and as was here, glory to be brought unto your name. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Just with this one word, see, what do you see in that? Dad used to do that too. So he'd take us out to the woods and he'd point something and he'd say, what do you see? Well, half the time I was blind and I said, I don't see nothing. I can't see. And then as he began to show or point out, then I could see. I worked with carpenters before and things that they could see in their mind. Don't you see that? We like, know it. I'm sorry. I'm blind to the back. That's not, that's a mental process of being able to see. Someone sent me one of them crossword puzzle things and they said, what's the first word you see? Of course, it was supposed to be words of love and good things and that, and I saw rat. Uh, that's not the first word you're supposed to see. I always see the wrong things. Here you've got this account. What a miracle. Threefold miracle. Look what happens here. You got Elisha the prophet who can see the, the spiritual realm. He's not scared. He sees the angelic host there with the with the chariots and the horsemen and the angels, swords, spears, ready to defend him. He's not worried about these common men because who's greater, angels or men? And again, we just went through this. If God be for you, who can be against you in this? So Elisha's not afraid, but his servant Gehazi, he's scared to death. What does he see? He sees the army, the Assyrian army, and he knows. Can't outrun them. I got an old man here beside me. I'm in trouble. He looks at the, the earth, the temple, and he can't see this. Now, here's the first miracle. Elisha prays for him. <clears throat> Who are you praying for? Elisha prays for his servant and says, open his eyes. You want to make a prayer for me? Have me make a prayer for you? Isn't that a prayer that we pray one for another? Open our eyes that we may see. What do you want to see? Oh Lord, just what would you give to see a glimpse? Two seconds. T.W. Hunt used to describe to me when he saw the eye of Jesus. He had a vision one night. And he saw the eye of Christ. And he would always go into this explanation about it. And it just left me there listening. Hang it. One is, is to say, I want to sit. Let me sit. You know, get a nice box. Got a nice, nice box right here. And I'm going to put Christmas paper all around and a bow on top of. Did you see what was inside? In the arena, I'm going to give it to you. Guess what's inside of it? Jump. <laughs> but boy, I, let me see. Let me see. Let me see what's in the box before I say whether I wanted it or not. Looks pretty. Nicely wrapped. You don't know what's in it, though. You think that those who stay outside the walls of the church know what's in it? You think those, when we sing these songs and we go through these verses, they see the outside of the church, do they see the inside? You know, that here's the steeple. And you look at all the people, you know, that little thing that they do with that. I always loved that. You can look from afar and see the physical. But you can't see the spiritual without God opening the eyes. You know, the system to go through scriptures, all the word studies and all the phrases that I, that I do, you can read black ink on white paper all of your life and never see anything. 
But all of a sudden, when God opens your eyes to see, now it's clear as a bell, isn't it? Don't you like it when they put them drops in your eyes when you go to the eye doctor and you think, come out of there saying, well, I thought this was supposed to make me better. I really can't see. I couldn't see before I came in. Now I really can't see if you stumble all around. I hated that. Get them drops in your eyes. But this is the way that now here comes this army and Elisha is praying for encouragement for his servant. His servant's eyes are open and he sees and everything's okay now. You and I look at this world today. She sings that song, All is Well. It is all well here. It is all well here. But it ain't all well out there, is it? My mind and my heart goes when I read about a three-year-old getting shots in the drive-by Christmas shop with her grandma. Who leaves the house thinking that such a tragedy is going to occur? Nobody. But it happens. God's mercy goes before us. You know, every morning, it's like that prayer goes out. Lord, I don't know what's waiting up. I know saints waiting. Go before me, Lord. Go before me this week. I got 13 days. You got 13 days left in this year. Lord, go before us. And when we come to that moment, give us eyes to see what you're doing. Do you ever see the the things of God right here across the bridge. I'm coming out of Romney one night, and there's a guy hitchhiking. And I've been there and done that. Standing out there praying and begging somebody would stop. And I guess I look too much like a shady character. No amen. And nobody would stop. So I ended up walking and running more than I did hitchhiking. So I've always been sympathetic to a hitchhiker because I've been there. So I stop and I pick this guy up. Instances of moments. You look at a person and you size them up. You look at them and you're thinking, what kind of person did I just pick up in this? Are they a saint? Are they a demon? You know, the majority of the time when you pick someone up, they're just hard luck on their times, right? Car broke down, don't have a ride, need to get from point A to point B. No big thing in that, but it's always, when you're looking spiritually, it's always divine moments. When you go into a store, when you go out into public, it's always an opportunity for a divine moment that God is going to set someone in front of you that you can witness to, sir, minister to, give them the gospel maybe for the first time this year, whatever it might be. You never know, but if you don't have eyes to see, you're going to miss it. You know, I'll still never forget that. I picked that guy up. It was, it was looked like today. It was overcast. It was cold, rainy, and I said, where are you going? He said, I'm going up Route 50 to Grafton. I said, oh, I've got relatives out there. This was years ago with that. And I said, darkness coming on. I said, man, you ain't going, you're not even going to make it to the bottom of, of uh, the mountain to go up towards Mount Storm. I said, before it's dark. I said, you got a place to stay? I mean, he had nothing. He never, uh, a coat, <laughs> no gym bag, no, no nothing. It was odd to me what he was telling me that he was going so far with nothing. And I said, have you eaten? Got money for food? No, I, I didn't have much on me at that point either. He said, no, I haven't eaten all day. I said, well, let me go to Van Meyer. That's when the Van Meyer was still open over there. From. Went in, got him something to eat, food, drink. And I said, let me put you at the hotel, and you can get a fresh start in the morning. And, and he agreed to it. Got him at hotel at there at the Colonial Hotel there across from at the county line. Got him a room. We knew the Patels that ran that thing. I said, I'll come back in the morning and get you for breakfast, and I'll take you as far as I can up route 50. I come back the next morning, 8 o'clock that morning, whatever, gone. Bed never slept in. Room never kept. I said to the Patels, I said, where where'd the guy go that we got the room for? He never saw him this morning. Father had stayed up all night. Mother was up the next morning. He said, we never saw anybody come or go or leave. Never heard nothing in that. The only guy in the hotel. You know who I picked up? I picked up an angel. Do you not know that you have entertained angels unaware? I'm convinced to this day that that's who it was. But did he look like an angel to me when I picked him up? Looked like a dastardly guy like Paul, uh, uh, Philip sitting over here with him. Uh, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> 
And you and you looked at him and you think this is just another guy, another flesh and bone, but it wasn't. Did I have eyes to see? Not in the moment, but I did afterwards. Not everybody that looked at the Christ child, that baby being born, thought that it knew that it was the Son of God, did they? And not everybody that's going to come to Christmas is going to be able to see the true meaning of Christmas all. They think it's about presents. They think it's about food. They think it's about tradition. They think it's about holidays. They don't even know it's a holy day, do they? So this army comes, and now the second prayer goes into effect. Lord, make them blind. And you say, who, who in the world would you want to make blind? Jesus said to the Pharisee, because you think you see, you're blind. And until you realize that you're blind, you will never ask to see. There are those that sit in the church who think, I'm okay, I'm okay, because I've been baptized, I joined the church, I believe in God, and they are as blind as a bat. Their eyes have never been opened. They've never seen wonderful things of God. They've never seen anything in the scriptures. They don't see the miracles that take place round about them. They can look at a sunset and say, ah, it's just the same old sunrise, sunset. But a Christian sees the handiwork of God, don't they? You see the wonders of God. You know, your eyes have been opened. He prays, make them blind. In the prayer of the church today, that is religious, not the saints. Religious, Pharisees. They're blind. And they can't see. He says, now let me, this is not the way. This is not the man whom you seek. Let me take you to the one that you're seeking. Who would you lead people to seek for today? There's no counselor. There's no official. There's no teacher. There, there's nobody out there to take them to. Some people say, well, I'll take them to Dan. Not even me. Take them to who? Jesus. The one whom you seek. Malachi says that in chapter 2 there. He says, the one whom you seek, and you've got to ask yourself that question, and you've got to ask your family and friends, who are you seeking? Seeking after Jesus? How would you go about finding somebody that's lost today? You ever lost somebody? Huh? Down at the Ryman Auditorium. Tens of thousands of people in that place. We're standing there, and all of a sudden they'll say, hey, you're missing one. Which, again, that's all I ever did. I never knew their names. I just knew number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just counted them off, you know. Hey, you're missing one. And I did a quick head count, and I was like, I am. Georgie, you really messed up this one. That's all right. We'll just make another one. All right? No. Desperation, right? He's lost. Can't see him. You're in throngs of people. I'm going back through the crowd. I'm not looking at faces. He's this tall. I'm looking down here. That That's age. And all of a sudden, here comes this blonde, toe-haired kid out. Got him. I saw him. Thank you. How fast of it was. How scary to lose him. Just like that. And again, not being able to see. Not being able to know where it's at. How it's happened. What's going on. I don't can't see the future. I don't really want to see the future. I'm blind to those things. But I am confident in the one who holds tomorrow. I'm confident in my Lord. And that at that point where he says, you are seeking me. And you will find me. Why? Because you will search for me with all your heart. The reason most people don't find Christ today. Oh, I tried to go to church. Yeah, I got baptized. Yeah, I made a decision. The reason that they never stayed with it is because they didn't do it with all their heart. Again, I am a clackologist. I can diagnose pneumonia. I do it very easily. I can diagnose that there are other issues and other problems. The way people respond and the way people are reacting. Because I see and I hear but the idea of this is, is that what is the condition of most people's lives and hearts today? Are they with God? Are they seeking God? If I have to chicken arm you, put a wing, wishbone on you there to make you read your Bible, then I fail. I don't have to take a, a whip behind you and say, you will do it. 
Well, hey, I'll give you a piece of candy if you come to church. Hey, I, I, I'll a cup of coffee if you if you say a prayer. No, you don't bribe people. Your heart wants to do it, longs to do it. The one that you are seeking. The prayer of that is to seek for it. If you're not hungry, then none of that food's going to interest you, is it? But if you're hungry, let me be first in line. What's your appetite? Who are you seeking? Elisha says, I'm not the one that you're seeking. And again, men out here come seeking the church. They come seeking entertainment. They come seeking their big toes to be petted. They come seeking their ears to be tickled. They're seeking the wrong thing, aren't they? Seek Jesus. For in him is all the answers and the comfort that we need. Now Elisha gets the whole army, leads them to Samaria, puts them right in front of the king of Israel, and he makes the third prayer. He prays for Gehazi, open his eyes that he can see. Gehazi saw things that you and I should long to see. He prays the second prayer, and he says, make them blind. Don't let your church see, Lord. They're proud, they're arrogant, they're self-righteous. Don't let the church see that our Pharisees. Don't let them see the truth. Now it's time to pray all eyes to be open. When their eyes were open, they realized where it was going. They were right in the camp of the enemy. The Syrians came, horses, chariots, army, and Elisha put them right in front of the king, surrounded by the army of Israel, and God gained the victory that day, again, on behalf of his people. Israel was not right with God. They had wicked kings, evil kings. They wasn't right with God. They didn't care about who they were seeking or who was the Lord or Baal. But God gave the enemy into their hands because it was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You and I are here together today because we've got a promise. If two or three of you are gathered together in my name. What did the Lord promise us? I would be there. Now he's here. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. But when Jacob said that prayer over in Genesis, he finished it with what? And I didn't even know it. I don't want to come into church and know the promises of God, know the word of God, and not see. Lord, let me see. Let me see the angelic heavens. Daniel. There was a, two times in the scriptures where Daniel's praying and God sends his angel to him. What would you give for your angel to show up with you? The Lord sent me. Man, greatly beloved you are, Daniel. Man, what words to hear. Thou art greatly beloved, Daniel. And the moment that you began to pray, God heard you and God sent you. Now, the one time he had to wait three weeks because the prince of Persia withstood him. But the other time that he prayed, you read that prayer, it didn't take 120 seconds and his angel showed up. My, my angel would be there in like three seconds because he drives like Jehu. Recklessly. Right, right there, right now. Or Lorena, I should say. Or heavy foot back here. I mean, you talk about getting there. The idea of this is, is that the angel shows up because God sent him and he got to see things. I, you know, I'm coming through that with minor prophets right now. Ezekiel. You ever look at that thing that Ezekiel saw with all the wheels and that? It just, I can't see it in my mind. Daniel gets to see the angel. Servants. What do you think Jonah saw while he was at the, in the fish's belly there at the bottom of the sea? What do you think he saw down there? Wasn't like he had a candle or a light that he could light it down there. He saw darkness. And in the darkness he did what? Lord, lift me up out of here. And the Lord heard his prayer. And the fish vomited him out. And the first thing he did was he hit the ground and saw daylight. It's a dark time out there. Aleppo, tragedies yesterday, this year. 52,000 drug overdose deaths, murder, suicides, on down the line we go with all of our prayer requests and needs that we constantly bring up before the Lord. When we come to the close of this year, we've seen these things. We see not, not God in that, we see the evil in those things. 
And what will we get for 2017 for it to be reversed? Let the evil be put down. Let the darkness be drowned out. Let the light shine. Give us eyes to see, Lord. Those who think they can see, just let them remain blind. Move in me, God. Move in thee, Lord. Me, us. Let me see things in the Word that I've never seen before. Three page, three chapters to go. Did you ever find, did you see anything reading through the Bible this last time that you never saw before? A lot of them. Always, always see something different in the Word. You know the only ones who don't see anything in the Word are those who aren't in the Word. You can't see it unless you're in it. And the reason that you can't see the heavenlies is because you're too earthly minded. So Lord, let me see. Let me know. Let me hear. Telling him my favorite Bible verse. That was my favorite Christmas song that she sang all of my love that song. My favorite Bible verse for the Christmas message is in Luke chapter two, verse twenty. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. You know why people are not glad and rejoicing in the Lord? Because they haven't heard anything and they haven't seen anything. When I'm out hunting and I see a deer, a buck or a doe, I'm glad and rejoicing. Woohoo! When I see snow coming, woohoo! I'm rejoicing! Every truth in this word. I'm glad and rejoice for what I've heard and what I've seen. And there is no one that can do that but God. Keep letting me see. Oh God. Keep letting me hear. Keep letting me grow. New Year. Christmas. What do you want for Christmas? I have eyes to see, but I cannot see. I have ears to hear, but I cannot hear. Isn't that what Jesus condemned for most people? You and I live in a world just like that. Oh God. Pray the prayer of Elisha. Let thy servant see. Those that are blind, let them see now. What a great prayer. It's three great prayers here. Three great miracles. And we're still experiencing the same thing today. So as I pray, and I think about those that are lost, those that are perishing, on their way to hell, how great.